The MacBook Pro with Touch Bar is Apple's most forward-thinking laptop to date, but do all these changes improve the experience or provide unnecessary annoyances? Well, let's find out. I'm Joe the Geek, and this is my full review of the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. MacBooks have always set the standard for a laptop design, and the MacBook Pro with Touch Bar continues this trend, improving on the previous design in subtle ways. It's now available in this nice space gray color in addition to the traditional silver. Sadly, there is now no glowing Apple logo, but there is a nice stainless steel inlaid Apple logo that matches the color of the case and still looks pretty nice. The hinge is now completely metal, meaning there's no plastic on the casing. The result is an extremely solid laptop that feels very high quality. You can see it in the little details, like the super smooth hinge and the notch on the lid that allows you to open it with one hand. Along with the design improvements are some changes to the actual size. This MacBook is physically smaller than the previous generation, making it even more portable than before. Couple that with the thinner and lighter design, and this MacBook Pro is significantly nicer to carry around than before. The keyboard and trackpad have also been improved. The Force Touch trackpad, as always, is the absolute best in the industry and is now huge, giving plenty of room for all of macOS's multi-touch gestures. The keyboard is switched to a lower travel butterfly mechanism design. Some people hate it, but it seems like most only hate it at first and then love it after using it for a bit. After using it for a short while, I quickly adjusted and now really enjoy typing on it. I feel like it enables faster typing because it doesn't require near as much force to actually push the keys down as you're typing. Also, be aware that this new keyboard design is a little bit louder than the previous mechanism. On the sides of the keyboard are the improved speakers. They get really loud, are very clear, and sound really nice overall. Moving to the upper half of the laptop, you'll find that the bezels have been reduced, helping to make the form factor of the laptop smaller. This is an excellent change and just looks great. Of course, the screen is the usual retina quality, running at 2560 by 1600 and scaled by default to 1440 by 900. On the old models, the screen was by default scaled to 1280 by 800, and you could upscale to 1440 by 900 if you wanted. However, on these newer MacBook Pros, the 1440 by 900 is now default, and 1280 by 800 is a downscale option. You can also go up to 1680 by 1050 if you need a lot of space. In any of these options, the screen is still crisp and sharp and looks fantastic. Additionally, the color gamut has been improved at P3, and the brightness has increased to 500 nits, which is a very welcome change for someone like me who likes to use their MacBook outdoors. As you'd expect with any retina display, this is overall an excellent screen with great colors and sharp text. Overall, this MacBook's design really sets the bar. It's sleek, solid, and feels completely new and much more modern than the previous design. As a result, it feels like a whole new machine rather than just an iteration of a previous one. One of the most controversial things about this MacBook Pro is its ports. It has four USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. Many have lamented the fact that there are no USB-A ports, meaning that you'll have to use an adapter for many peripherals. However, after using this machine for several months, I can assure you it's not that big of a deal. Yes, the adapters do get a bit annoying at times, but I love the fact that USB-C is reversible and much easier to use in regard to plugging in and pulling out. Also, the ability to plug the charging cable into any port is worth the loss of MagSafe, in my opinion. Plus, there are third-party alternatives to MagSafe now, so problem solved there. I do wish they included an SD card reader, though, as my current SD card setup is quite clunky and requires way too much work than it should. There are increasingly more and more USB-C accessories in the market now, and it's only a matter of time before USB-C becomes the norm. Many Windows laptops are also implementing it. Yes, it would be nice to have just one USB-A port on this machine, but then again, people would probably never switch to the benefits of USB-C if forward-thinking companies like Apple didn't make bold moves like this. In my opinion, it's nice to have four easy-to-use and versatile ports that can be used for display, charging, or accessories. If these benefits require a few adapters for the time being, so be it. For me, it's fine. If you're someone who is constantly using USB-A accessories and the adapters would significantly slow down your workflow every single day, then maybe hold off until USB-C is more mainstream, but otherwise, don't let USB-C scare you away, as it really is quite great. The headline feature of this MacBook Pro is, of course, the touch bar. The touch bar is an OLED touchscreen strip that replaces the standard row of function keys on the keyboard. Because it's a screen, it can change contextually based on the apps that you're using, giving app-specific controls. It also allows fine adjustments using sliders rather than generic button presses. Sliding with your finger to adjust things is much nicer than using a cursor on the screen. There's also plenty of touchable buttons that control many different settings or app elements. The control strip sits to the right of the touch bar and can be expanded whenever needed with a touch of a button. It displays the standard controls found in the keyboards of other Macs, but as mentioned, allows much finer adjustment using sliders. I much prefer adjusting volume and brightness this way. It can also be customized, so you can add controls that you use most frequently. All of this is a tremendous advantage over the function keys. The touch bar also includes typing suggestions, which you can quickly tap as you're typing, much like you'll find on the iOS keyboard. 
Also, the escape key is now a touchable button which you can access on the touch bar. But the big question is, is it actually useful? For me, it's kind of a mixed bag. On the one hand, I love using it to adjust volume and brightness and to scrub through music or video. On the other hand, I still haven't really learned to use it in apps all that much. I don't use a ton of apps anyway, but some of the ones I do don't even support the touch bar. One of the most useful features of it for me has been the ability to quickly scrub through an audio track while in another full screen app when I'm working on lighting programming. Rather than having to switch back to iTunes, I can quickly scrub through the music I'm programming to. This saves a lot of time and is very helpful, and is an example of how the touch bar can improve a workflow. So I'd say, while it is an improvement over the function keys, and it's definitely an advantage to owning this MacBook Pro, and I would like to see it on future MacBooks, obviously, it shouldn't be a sole reason to buy this machine. For photo applications, I can see the color and brush sliders being really helpful, but still not game-changing enough to buy it just for this feature. Despite that, it still is very useful and does bring many of the benefits of a touchscreen to the Mac without getting in the way or compromising the traditional cursor and keyboard MacBook experience. Next to the touch bar is the new power button with the Touch ID sensor integrated right in. It can be used for unlocking the MacBook and also for purchases, Apple Pay, and many finder actions which traditionally require a user password. Just like on the iPhone, it's super helpful and convenient. It's super easy to open the lid and place your finger on the sensor and much better than typing in a password to unlock your Mac. The MacBook Pro is obviously aimed at users who want a laptop capable of running professional applications, and this 13-inch model is definitely capable of doing that. My model has a 2.9GHz dual-core Intel Core i5 processor with 8GB of LPDDR3 RAM and Intel Iris 550 graphics built in. You can configure the 13-inch MacBook Pro with up to a Core i7 processor, 16GB of RAM, and 1TB of flash storage. Overall performance is great, especially for everyday tasks. Running iMovie for editing works great, as does my lighting programming software. And there's no issue running multiple apps at once. Also, the flash storage in this model is extremely fast, meaning super quick boot up and very fast data transfer within the computer. However, I will say that if I was doing anything more intense, something like Final Cut Pro on a professional basis, I would want to step up to the 15-inch MacBook Pro. But for my current usage, the 13-inch MacBook Pro is perfect, and I suspect for most casual video editors, and also many photo editors and other professionals, this machine will be the perfect combination of power and portability. It's also a great machine for anyone who needs or wants more than the 12-inch MacBook offers. With the MacBook Air being somewhat outdated now, this is really Apple's only current 13-inch laptop, so if you need a good everyday MacBook, this 13-inch MacBook Pro is a great option. If you need to run a ton of professional applications all the time, the 13-inch would probably be better for you with the quad-core processor and 16 gigs of RAM coming standard. But if you're like me and you're only using heavy applications somewhat and not all the time, the 13-inch works great and also gives you the benefit of portability. Also, you can add a nice monitor and some Bluetooth accessories and give yourself the best of both worlds, a large screen at your desk when you need it, and the portability of a laptop when you also need it. In terms of software, the MacBook Pro runs macOS, Apple's tried and true desktop operating system. The current version is 10.13 Sierra. It adds some nice but mostly minor improvements. The biggest addition is Siri. And with the touch bar, Siri gets a dedicated button, making it a lot easier to access than before. Overall, macOS is a very secure and stable operating system that is very well optimized for this machine. It's also quite intuitive and easy to learn and use. One of the biggest advantages of macOS is its integration with iOS and other Apple devices. You have access to all of iCloud's excellent syncing and integration features, and handy continuity features like HandDrop and AirDrop. So if you already have an iPhone, iPad, or other Apple devices, these features are a huge selling point for this MacBook Pro. So should you buy this MacBook Pro? With a starting price of $12.99 for the current 2017 model with only 128GB of flash storage, and a price of $14.99 for a more reasonable 256GB, this MacBook certainly isn't cheap. However, it is a very premium laptop, and you definitely get what you pay for in terms of quality. That's not to say this machine is immune from issues, as the new design has had its share of problems, albeit many of them overblown. I have had a few issues with individual keys feeling stuck on the keyboard, but other than that, my experience has been on par with my previous MacBooks, a very stable and premium user experience. That's what you're getting with this MacBook, just in a different form. Rather than a time-tested design that's been used for years, you get a bold, fresh design that, while it has its potential quirks and possible issues, makes great improvements to the user experience and ends up feeling quite different and even more premium than before. The Touch Bar and USB-C are features that will take some getting used to and might scare some potential users away, but they are indeed great improvements. Just not enough to be the only reason you buy this machine, so if you're looking to upgrade just because of the Touch Bar and new design, don't. Wait until you need more speed or storage than your current MacBook offers before splurging on one of these new models. While the 15-inch Pro is super expensive and the 12-inch MacBook is too small and underpowered for a great everyday laptop, the 13-inch Pro is the perfect mainstream MacBook and I can confidently recommend it for just about anyone who doesn't need extreme power or extreme portability. So if you need a new MacBook or are jumping on the Mac platform for the first time, this is a fantastic machine that not only is great now, but will be even better in the future as USB-C and the touch bar are more widely adopted and should be able to handle most tasks.
That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed my review of the MacBook Pro 13 inch with touch bar. If you liked this, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know what you thought in the comments below. For more geeky videos like this, subscribe so you don't miss out, thanks so much for watching, God bless, and have a great day.